just a coincidence, or could this latest information help solve Rosie Tapia's cold case murder? She was murdered in 1995, and over the past two weeks, ABC4 has uncovered two possible persons of interest, and now it's led to another development. For every crime, there's a story in The Truth Matters. Here's ABC4's Marcos Ortiz with tonight's Justice Files. This all centers on the break into Rosie's bedroom. From the outset, police targeted family members that got nowhere. Now it appears they didn't either ask or knew of these acquaintances of Rosie's older sister. I was waiting, to, you know, because of, you know, the situation with me going in that window. I was just shocked that the cops never come and called me or anything. Danny Woodland saw the news back in 1995 when Rosie Tapia's body was found in a nearby canal from where she lived. The six-year-old was kidnapped from her bedroom. The intruder used her window to get in. Her killer's never been found. It's been long enough. The cops have fouled this up from day one. The, the family needs closure. And it happened 24 years ago. He says after the creation of the latest composite was reported exclusively on ABC4 in March, he got a call from an old friend. At the time, only partial images of the composite were released. He just made the comment it'd be funny if it looked like one of us. You know, the friends that hung out around there, that's best to me because of uh, me sneaking in the window. But. Back in 1995, Woodland used the same bedroom window where Rosie was abducted to have late night rendezvous with her older sister. His friend and others would drop him off. But was he aware of the window? Well, yeah, yeah, he saw me knock on it, climb in it. Did he ever go through that window as far as you know? Uh, not, not that I recall, to be honest with you. Did he ever visit Rosie's apartment? I mean, the Tapia's apartment? Um, yeah, I believe he, he went with him. All this comes as a surprise to Rosie's mother. I guess they sat around the table and had a few beers, and I found out that my mother was there, too, when they came. And I never knew anything about this. When the composite was officially released in May, Woodland texted his friend. And I texted him and said, that looks like you, dude. What was his response? I uh, called me back. No, that ain't me. Well, it looks like you. Mo it looks more like you than it did me. A witness who also was never interviewed by police helped create the composite in March. And last week, in a photo lineup conducted by Tapia's private investigator, that same witness picked his friend out. The guy that done it. I mean, he's got 24 free years. I mean, uh, at least be decent human being, die with some dignity, give the family some closure. Woodland says his friend denies having anything to do with Rosie's murder. He says police paid his friend a visit yesterday. Woodland told him DNA will give police their answer. By the way, Woodland says if police want his DNA as well, he's ready to offer it. When asked about all of this, Salt Lake City police had no comment, but they do investigate any lead that comes their way. For the Justice Files, Marcus Ortiz, ABC4 News.